Welcome to the Woodpreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for the business and marketing side of the lumber, woodworking, hardwood flooring, and sawmill industry. I'm your host, Steve from Acres of Timber. Each week, we feature various wood business owners and entrepreneurs from around the globe. We share their stories, paths, insights, so that you can network, learn, and grow your own wood business. Thank you so much for listening. Now enjoy the episode. The Woodpreneur Podcast is proudly sponsored by Acres CRM. Acres CRM is the wood industry's only customer relationship management software dedicated to helping you automate your sales and marketing so that you can focus on serving your customers and growing your business. You can visit acresoftimber.com to learn more and to schedule a demo. Once again, that's acresoftimber.com. Hey, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Woodpreneur Podcast. This is your host, Steve. Today's guest is Justin Bailey from Campfire Woodworks. How are you doing, Justin? Hey, Steve. Uh, how's it going? Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm excited to have you on. Um, hey, so why don't you tell us, uh, how did you guys get started? How did you get started with uh, Campfire Woodworks? All right. Uh, well, going back, let's go back to, to the very beginning. I've always been kind of a, a crafty person, you know, high school shop class and all that. Um, and I sort of got away with it. I went to college in New York City and I've lived in New York City for about 14, 15 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, about five years ago, my wife and I decided to, uh, to move out to the suburbs and we bought a house in Rahway, New Jersey. And that house came with a garage. And one of the things that um, one of the agreements that we had when we first moved here was that anything that needed to be made or fixed or done around the house that we would try and do it ourselves before we paid someone else to try and do it. Um, And so out of necessity, I ended up building a kitchen island for our kitchen um, with a couple of, you know, uh, Ryobi tools in the yard uh, on a a folding table from Costco. uh, And I kind of, I caught the bug again. Um, I remembered how much I enjoyed doing that that, that crafty stuff. And uh, uh, you know, one project turned into two, three. Eventually, I built a cutting board, um, and I moved all my tools into the garage. We cleaned out this garage that we had. You know, we never parked a car in there, and it had been empty yeah. for the first year we had the house. And so, uh, I cleaned out the garage, built a little workbench, had a couple of tools in there, did some projects, uh, and a bunch of my friends reached out to me and they said, "Hey, can you make me this? Can you make me that?" Uh, so I started building these projects and, and selling them for a few dollars. Uh, and it, it started to snowball from there. I made an Etsy shop. Uh, I went ahead and built an Instagram, and then things really took off uh, around um, to the, the end, you know, the beginning of 2020, the very beginning of the pandemic. Uh, yeah. our, my day job, our offices closed in New York City, and I ended up working from home, and that gave me a ton of free time. Uh, I didn't have an hour and a half to meet <laughs> on each end of my day anymore. Oh, my God. And uh, I spent a lot more time in the shop, um, making projects, working on a website, working on Instagram. Uh, and from there, it just kind of, it's just been snowballing. Um, it, it's really taken off in the last two years. So uh, for, you know, for a lot of people, the pandemic has been um, a bit of a burden for, for my wife and I. It's been a bit of a, a blessing with me being able to start this Campfire Woodworks thing. You know, it's so interesting. I feel like there's going to be like books in the future about this time where <laughs> people really connected with the thing that they're truly passionate about and all these all these amazing businesses have. That's actually, you know, what's so interesting that you say it like that um, with the pandemic, because I mean, the same thing happened with me, same thing happened with clients. It's like everybody was home and they got time to work on things that they truly wanted and new businesses, new new passions, new income streams, new relationships formed out, out of this time. It's actually, do you remember, remember uh, what 2008 after the, 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 the recession, there's yeah. a lot of like a lot of businesses grew out of that. Like food trucks became a thing. And then like all these like artisanal type businesses. I mean, you lived in New York. Do you remember like the Brooklyn flea? Do you remember that? Yep, I remember all that. I was, yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. getting I was just getting started kind of off on my own at that point after college. Yeah, 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 yeah. All those like literally all those things came out of like people's uh the like, you know, a change in the environment, change in the the climate. That's so awesome. Uh I'm I'm really happy that you that you I'm I'm sure like in many ways it's, you know, I'm sure it was like a mental health break from what was happening in the world, right? 
Yeah, I think so. I think I think having that time out in the shop um, and, and just really kind of you know, zoning out, I guess, um, mm-hmm. getting into the flow of things in the shop and, and really concentrating on the work that I was doing in there, it kind of got me away from uh, watching the 24-7 news about you know COVID numbers and, and all the things that deal with, with work and stuff. Um, it became my, my, my escape and actually it worked out. I never had an intention of building this up as far as it's gone, um, but I'm really happy it, it has. And, you know, what, what I thought would be kind of a, a fun little side hobby has become, you know, a pretty big part of my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do have a day job. And and so how much time are you putting into into this? Is it like 40, two full times almost? It, it's essentially two full time jobs. I mean, I work my regular job, essentially, you know, nine to five, Monday through Friday. Uh, I get up from my, my desk in, in my house. around six o'clock um yeah and uh i'm in the shop sometimes until you know midnight one o'clock in the morning uh, and then i take uh you know one week end day every week and i'll spend a weekend day in the shop and then i'll get myself a i have, a, I have one free day a week essentially but i'm not in the shop well it's a, every day you're you're work you're working making building the business on the side and um well not even on the side you're, you're putting in a lot of time um that's awesome. What what are your your main product services? What are you what are you building? What are you selling the most of? So right now I'm making and selling mostly a lot of household products. So you know, cutting boards, security boards, um, small knickknacks and things. Um, uh, one of the things I I started making um, just out of necessity. I had a I had a I had a dog that passed away uh, in Sorry. 2019. Thank you. And. Um, I wanted to build kind of like a memory box for him. And so mm-hmm. I decided to build a shadow box to hang his collar and, and his dog bowl and everything. Uh, and I posted that up on Etsy and I got tons and tons of messages and people asking if you know they can buy one. And so it's been one of my big sellers is making these uh, display cases and shadow boxes. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, so so a lot of household product. And you, how, how did you stumble upon that? Was it just kind of like, necessity because of the space that you had is that yeah that what necessity happened? because of the space that i have i work in a 27 by 14 kind of one and a half car garage so uh, yeah. building you know giant tables and things aren't really in, in the cards for me at the moment with the size shop that i have so i try and stick to things that will fit on my workbench and that can be you know shipped and mailed easily so it, it really it's based on you know the the space that I have to work with. Uh, I've done a couple of custom projects and end tables and a coffee table or two here and there. Uh, but I really don't have the space to 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 push that part of the business as far as I'd like it to go. It seems like a lot of the um just looking at your products, it's it's really interesting how uh it seems like there's like a, a lot of intention behind the products that you make. Is there is there you know, like I'm looking at obviously the the shadow box, which is really cool, um, and the bread bow knife. Like, you know, like how 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 are you getting these ideas? Are they just are you looking at the stuff in your house? You're like, oh, it would be great if I made that, and then you start making it, and then you start selling them. Is that what happened? So yeah, there's, there's two ways I think I, I I come up with some of these ideas. Uh, one of them is honestly going to like the home goods stores. And looking around at some of the cool little knickknacks and products they have there and going oh how can I, true yeah it's like how can i elevate this product like i see this thing here made out of you know some cheap wood you know mass produced somewhere or made out of some sure. other material and i go you know how could i make that out of wood and how could i make it pretty like could i add some purple heart to this or some you know some splined miters and just really you know make a product that's functional and like it's bespoke you know it's the, there's it's one of one in the world for yeah. sure for and, sure I think the other the other big one is you know, people reach out to me. Um, I have a, a a couple of products on there like the Tostones Press, where someone will reach out to me and say, "Hey, can you make me one of these things?" And I've never seen it before. I don't know what it is. And I go, "Oh, you know what? Let me let me try that. Let me try and elevate this this, this item for you a little bit and make something bespoke for you." Uh, and it turns out really well. Uh, I take some pictures of it and I put it on Etsy and I say, "Hey, you know what? If anybody else wants one of these." I'll make some custom ones for you. And that's kind of how it goes with that. That's cool. The Tostones maker. That's really awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah. The, uh, yeah, I, I could totally see that being a hit in like Caribbean, you know, Latino families. Um, 
That's awesome. And, and you know what, you bring up an, an excellent point, like going to Home Goods or Pier One or, or one of those places, they're like a hotbed for product ideas, yeah. period. Like, and you know the wood is crap, but the way they merchandise them are like amazing. And you can basically hack their products. And, and um, you actually kind of gave me an idea, like look, to, look on the home goods stuff and uh, look at what's the highest rating, like which one has the most ratings and then jack that product idea. Cause I'm even looking yep. at like the cracker tray or the tostones maker, right? Like, or anything else, like, I don't know where you're getting your wood from, but like, it looks pretty clean. Like imagine like dropping like some, uh, you know, filling the holes with epoxy, right? So like give it a little bit of character. Um, so just, you know, and like, like what you said, just like bow ties in them, right? Like add some flair, that's really cool. You bring up a great point. One of the things that I'm working on now that I've been experimenting with is using brass to inlay into a lot of the pieces Whoa, that I've been making. That's a great idea. That's a um, great idea. And I don't have a lot of products yet that have that, uh, but I have a ton of stuff laying around my house that I've made one off of in the shop and said, mm -hmm. you know, will this work? Can I make more like this? What's the, you know, what are my time constraints of making it? Because it really, it's, it's also a balance. I, I can't spend four hours making a product that I only sell for $120. So a lot of it yeah. is seeing like, can I make this an amount of time that's worth me making 10 of them, 15 of them? For sure. Or even bat batching them, right? Like yep. batch make them um, that, uh, what's your website built on? Is that Shopify or? Yeah, it's that? built on Shopify. Um, it's actually, okay. it's, it's moved to Shopify. I, I had it on WordPress for a while. And mm -hmm. it just, it wasn't working for me. It was, I was spending way too much time updating plugins, updating plugins and all that stuff. And so I kind said, you know what? Yeah. I, 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 I tried not to, um, I tried not to commit to myself that I was fully committed to it. You know, I, I didn't want to go all in pot committed to the, to the website. So I, I pulled out while I still, while I still had a chance and spent a couple of days rebuilding things on Shopify. And I'm so much happier with this website. Cool. Hey, so what, what has been, how are you how are you getting most of your clients is it like word of mouth is it is it etsy where, where you what's your main source of leads customers a lot, a lot of it's etsy i would say about 50 percent of the the clients i get both for custom orders and for you know the everyday things that i sell about 50 percent of it's coming through etsy um, they do a really good job with their seo and so you kind of just you post it up there and you let it do its work for you uh, and then the rest of it, a lot of it. Are you paying for extra advertising? I am, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's it, it comes with the territory when you're using Etsy. You're, you're going to pay for extra yeah. advertising, um, but it pays off. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, if they, and they give you they give you stats every month that you know, like you know, per dollar spent on ads, how much came back to you through the purchases, and so far it's paid off. So I'm not That's too cool. worried about that. And then the rest of it is has been Instagram. Uh, I have a I have a following that's pretty evenly split between oh, other makers i feel like you just you just blew up even more right like I did i think when my i think when you signed up to when you booked the the time to call i did am i bugging or did you have like twelve thousand followers and now you're up to twenty one thousand? so i gained five thousand followers in two weeks i just had a post <laughs> <laughs> I just had a post hit 3.5 million on one of my uh, views on one of my reels. And wow! It's it's been it's been a roller coaster the last two weeks. Wow. Which which one was it? It's me sharpening some chisels with uh with with some sandpaper using the uh, the scary sharp method. Uh huh. And it's okay. a quick little 15 second video of me sharpening a, a chisel. Uh, I, and it was it's funny because I feel like the more work you put in to posting uh, on Instagram, the more time you spend editing and thinking about a post, the worse it performs. That was it's one of so those, true. It's so that, true. That was one of those Tuesday mornings I woke up. I hadn't been in the shop in a couple of days. I had nothing to post for the day. So I went out there and spent 10 minutes sharpening one of my chisels, threw it up on Instagram and forgot about it. Um, wow. Wow. That's so cool. Um, that's really, really cool. I love your shop too. That's so awesome. Um, what did you, what, before, when, as you started to get serious, what are the first couple tools that you really invested in 
that uh, that really paid off for you? So when I first got started, 99% of the tools I was using were Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace finds. Um, my table saw that I'm using today is still the 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 great Craigslist find that I had, um, and that was the first tool. That was the first big tool I actually purchased was that table saw. Did you use oh, profits from stuff in order to make it or you just yeah, use savings or whatever? Every single thing you see in that shop was paid for with money that I made from selling the products that I make. I've invested, uh, I think initially when I first you know, cleaned out the garage and redid the electrical and everything in there, I maybe spent about $1,500 out of my own pocket. And then from that point forward- On um, tooling up? On tooling up, yeah. I'm just getting yeah. getting wires run. I had, to, I had to paint the floor. I had to- there was a bunch of like just fixer upper things to do with the space. And then mm -hmm. initially buying wood to build a workbench and, and those things and the, the first few tools. And then from that point forward, every penny I've put into that shop has come from money that I've made um, building stuff. And so, but- how, how, well, how long was that process? Do you think like six months or a year? Like what do you- I, Probably about a year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I had been in the shop, I had, I had, started that shop about a year before the pandemic. Um, and throughout that year, things started kind of ramping up. And I think at about the point the pandemic hit, I was, you know, mostly fully tooled up. Uh, one of my biggest, the, I remember the, the first real new tool I bought was my drum sander. That was a, right. for me, that was a big investment. That was a huge spend. And honestly, it's probably paid off the most for me. Um, in terms of time. <laughs> in terms of time, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the time, man, hours of hand sanding is kind of the worst, but, you know, um, but that's cool. So, um, so you, so you and threw all of your money back into building up the shop. Um, are you, where are you getting your lumber from? Uh, a couple of local lumber yards. Uh, there's a few local places here in New Jersey. Um, the, the place that's just south of me called Monteith Lumber. Um, they've been really good to me. They have really good quality lumber. Uh, and so I'm, I'm pretty much there every week uh, picking out some new walnut, some new maple from them. They know me. Uh, every, every time I pull up, I, you know, I, I hear them shouting from, from one of the garages, hey, you're here for some more walnut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you... Um... Have you, have you, have you tried working with the local sawmill? Uh, I've gone to, so I've gone to a few local places um, or a, a local guys that, that have, um, um, that saw up their own lumber and have their own kilns in their backyard, um, mm -hmm. mostly for slabs. I think I've, I've found a lot of uh, people like that on Facebook marketplace that sell slabs. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I've been getting that from. I haven't really purchased much, um, you know, surface lumber from any of those folks. Yeah. Yeah. It usually comes with a lot of work, which is why you go to the lumber yard. Yeah, I yeah, know. I get it. Um, that's that's really cool. So tell me what um, what's been the challenge so far with your business? I think I think one of the one of the biggest ones for me, honestly, has been deciding what I want to do with it. Um, so I, I I I keep I have one foot in the door with the, the content creation side of things. And I have one yeah. foot in the door with an actual woodworking business. Uh, and it, it always, you know, every day in the shop is always a decision. Am I going to spend my time developing and creating products I'm going to sell? Or am I going to spend my time you know, making a video about something that I'm making? No, I, I know. It's kind of like the, it's kind of like the dilemma, right? Like, are you, who do you want to be? <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, um, you know, I, we could, we could talk about that. I mean, I think, remember I told you that, uh, that, that there's an opportunity for you to ask, ask questions at the end to get, uh, any marketing or business advice, but yeah, maybe we could, we could touch upon that. Um, who, how, how are you, how are you staying motivated enough to keep doing like what keeps you going? I, I love that creative process. I think the biggest thing that keeps me motivated is being able to get out into that shop and just like let loose, like having this this space now and this time where I can, I can like, I feel like a, a you know, a five-year-old playing with Legos again, you know, it's just, it, it yeah. becomes a, uh, I, I've been, I've gotten addicted to that process of being in a shop and uh, problem solving and figuring things, figuring things out. It keeps, it keeps my mind active, uh, it keeps my hands active. So I think 
think that's been my biggest motivator. Um, you know, if if I wanted to be, I think if I wanted to be a millionaire, uh, this isn't the path I would take. So no, no, <laughs> not at all. No, you have to, you have to change who you are, um, and reorient your business in order to, in order to do that. Um, are are there products that you want to be making more of, or things? Where do you where do you see your business going? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the things I really want to be making more of is like the small furniture pieces. Um, I mm -hmm. really enjoyed those the projects that take me, you know, days, if not weeks to complete. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the few coffee tables I've done, the few end tables and things that I've done that have taken me multiple weeks to do. Uh, I want to do more of that. That's that's really yeah. where I want to focus my time. That's I, I bought a CNC last year um, so that I could spend more time doing longer projects and less time, you know, uh, templating out a small serving tray. I could you sure. know, throw that into the machine, let the machine do that work while I'm working on a project I really love doing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, tell me, so this is the part of the uh, podcast where I give you any marketing or business advice. Is there a, is there something that you need help thinking through or in terms of your business, in terms of growing it? Yeah, I, I think one of the big things I struggle with is is developing like a, co a cohesive product line, right? So I look at a lot of these other, you know, woodworkers and Etsy shops and, and folks that are out there and they have, all their products have a certain look to them. They have a certain style to them and like it's immediately, you know, recognizable. recognizable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I quite have that yet. And I think I, I struggle with that. I haven't found that, that, that key element that I want to add to everything that I make. Sure. Sure. So you think it would, is that, is that your question? Like, how do you develop like a signature look? Yeah, I think, it, I think so. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I just had, I just had somebody uh, on uh, Woodward throwbacks on the podcast not too long ago. And so they have a line and I actually did this myself. And I, I also recommend this to people is that, uh, if you want like a standard line, you're going to have to use the same type of products all the time in order. It's like if it's walnut or whatever, it's the same thing all the time. Um, what I do like is is uh, approaching things from like a season's perspective. Right. So like, um, you know, like like a TV show, a TV show has different seasons. There's different themes and um and the most consistent thing that you can have is your is your uh, is your uh, is your logo, your brand, your personality, right? And so that's the consistent thing. But every season, so let's just say spring is coming around, or spring we're in spring right now. Spring is a season, and within this season, what you're feeling right now is you know ash or oak or walnut or whatever, right? And then come up with like a thing that it, but you, I, I think for you, what you just said earlier was that you, you feel like a kid in a candy store, right? Like, or playing with your Legos, like come up with like two, three key elements that are consistent, right? And then make everything just like that, right? Whether it's like an inlay or a bow tie or like the brass and just like come up and so like if it's charcuterie board, so uh, the tostones maker, the, you know, the bread knife thing, like do that, right? And just say, and then you build a collection based off of like, okay, I have enough wood to make 10 or 15 or 20 of these. And when it's done, it's done. It's like the whole scarcity mindset, like scarcity urgency, like, and then you kind of build up hype around that, that's how, what, what that does is enable you to connect more with your audience. They're more in tune with what you're making. And it builds like a little bit of a collection factor there. I've not seen, I've seen maybe one or one or two people do that successfully. Uh, but I haven't necessarily seen it with, they do it with like tables, but I haven't necessarily in charcuterie, but I haven't seen it done with like small home goods, right? So like, that's something to try out. So like, and like I said, you know, play around with epoxy, play around with other materials. So if you have your core products of what you'd like to make, and then maybe like one, one of those, you know, of those collections. So it's like, 
you know, two styles of charcuterie boards, uh, you know, a couple of cutting boards, a couple of other their signature home pieces, and then throw in one or two of the side tables or coffee tables. But it's all within that style. So that's how you could start building up the reps because like you already know how to make most of your other thing and start adding in other things there. The other thing that I would do lastly is you just grew a lot of followers in a very short period of time. I would thank them for following you. Whoever the most engaged people are that are always in your thing, literally slide into their DMs, creep on their profiles and make sure that they are, if they're potential customers, just say hi to them. Don't sell them. Just say hi to them. And I would like go live like once a week or once a month or whatever, just go live more just to connect more with this art. That's it. Like you now have an opportunity where you grew 5,000 followers in a very short period of time to truly connect and build this audience that are ravage, like ravage fans of you. Too many people build up this audience, but they don't connect to them. Yeah, I love that actually. And, and doing the lives is something that I've I've wanted to do for for a while now. So I think that you got it. Listen, you this is now the time. People take they take followers for granted, right? Like, and it's your num it's your number one thing right now. It's like, and then the next thing after that, and this is for everybody that's listening, is you put them on your mailing list, do a giveaway, and put them on your mailing list. Sign up for my mailing list. I'm going to give away one of these, right? Like, I don't know. Is your, uh, so are you, are you uh, Latino, Hispanic? Who, how did you come up with the Tostino maker? How did you make that? So my, my wife, my wife is born and raised in Colombia. So she's Colombian. And that's okay, a, that's okay. a thing we've, we've had around the house for a while. And I looked at it and I said, this thing is, this thing, we, we need to update this thing. And so let me go out and make me, yeah, make, make you one that actually works well. That, I feel like that's a market right there. You know what I mean? Like all of, all of those things, like I, if, I'll just give you one more is um, I would find, I would find a home goods store, a local boutique in and around like the Northeast and, and say, I'd love for you to carry my stuff. And now that you got the CNC, like you could batch make all of them, just give them a deal and then, and then push it towards your, because I mean, you're, 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 I haven't had much, I have a lot of friendship people have us, you know, like, I haven't had a lot of home good makers. And I think you have, I think you have something there. So. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Um, awesome, man. Was that helpful? Yeah, that was really helpful. I, awesome. I appreciate that. Awesome. Um, all right. So any last bit of parting advice from, uh, for the Woodpreneur community? Uh, keep grinding. Uh, so I think um, I, I, when I started Campfire Works, I had, you know, if, if, if social media is your thing and, you know, you really want to grow that following on Instagram, um, you know, I had, you know, 200 followers three years ago. Um, and mm -hmm. one of the things that I learned early on is an incredibly, one, there's an incredibly amazing, helpful and welcoming community just in the woodworkers and the maker community that's on Instagram. Um, everyone's always, you know, willing to give, you know, give you feedback on, on uh, if, if you DM them and everything. But uh, uh, one of the things I learned is just like being consistent and not, you know, not taking the downs as well as you take the ups. You know, I've had, I've had months where I, I didn't grow a single follower in two months and then all of a sudden it takes off again. I think, um, you know, if that's, if, if that's your thing and that's what you want to do, it's just really staying consistent and not really, not really worrying about the numbers um, as much and just, you know, put good content out, put the things you like out uh, and you know, it'll come. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, how can people follow you? So you can find me on Instagram, uh, Pinterest, Facebook, uh, at, at Campfire Woodworks. Oh. Awesome. Thank you so much, Justin. Um, I'm glad to, to have you on the podcast and uh, we got to get more home goods, small good makers. And uh, we got to actually, we got to get you more connected with the Sawyers out there. Cause I think there's uh, I think there's something there with being able to say that you're, that you're reclaiming salvage using all salvage material. I think that would be a good differentiator. And if you connect with the right Sawyer, that's kind of using the sort of urban lumber mindset uh, sort of ethos. 
I think that would be a really good uh, differentiator for yourself. You know what I mean? Like if you yeah. said, Hey, look, all my, all my stuff comes from salvage urban lumber or in and around New York city. Right. Like that's, that's a good value proposition. So yeah, we got to get you hooked up with more people like that. That'd be fantastic. And, and thank you again for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. I've been listening to your podcast for a while and I'm, I'm happy we finally got a chance to talk. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Woodpreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for the business and marketing side of the lumber, woodworking, hardwood, flooring, and sawmill industry. If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star rating and review. You can also tap into our community by visiting woodpreneurlife.com. Once again, that's woodpreneurlife.com.